Hey guys, it's Sarah's Sprout World. Welcome back to my channel. You have to excuse my voice. I'm a bit ill. I had my shots for South Africa and I feel like crap. My body is not enjoying this. Um, so yeah, excuse me. Um, this is gonna be such a cool video. I'm here with uh, Solaya and she is, um, as you see, a girl and I love girls in herpetology. <laughs> um, and she uh, is a snake breeder. She's been uh, into the snake world for 10 years now. So, 10 years, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. And um, you know how I love featuring girls who do cool stuff. So here I am. So can you tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, like uh, Steren said, I'm Solaya. I'm also from the Netherlands. And uh, I've been keeping snakes for 10 years. Um, started out with red snakes and now I'm really obsessed with the Suriname red tail boa. So, and that's uh, what we are holding at the moment as well. Even I'm getting a little bit obsessed because look at these creatures. <laughs> they are just so stunning. And you've been trying really hard to breed these guys, right? Yeah, well, actually it's really, I find, even I find it impressive. It was my first real attempt. So uh, I've had the female and male since 2011 and yeah, I just moved in here two years ago and I have my own place now. Oh, I'm sorry little guy. Uh, and I was like, yeah, now they're both ready. The male is five years old, the female is eight years old. So yeah, I introduced the male uh, November last year and it uh, all happened and it uh, was very successful. <laughs> and they're just so cute. Now, can you tell me what do you really love uh, specifically about this species? Yeah, the tail, of course, red tail, Suriname red tail. It's just uh, most specimens have such an amazing red tail, and their heads, the contrast on their heads is insane. And I also I like morphs as well. It's it's nice, you know, for variety. But I just think uh, there isn't much that can beat. Uh, animal how it looks in nature. It's a natural form. Yeah, yeah I yeah. do agree with that I mean, obviously I've been into breeding cobras and I really love the colors that they can breed with them But honestly wild type it really is just stunning as well, and it's just very nice oh, They're so soft. They're really, yeah. really soft scales. That's yeah, so cool. they're still so small. The scales are still so small, so That's so nice that one's really active. This one is just chilling, like, hello. Yeah, yeah, this one is really cruising around. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I find really cool about snakes is that they have several uh, reproductive modes. Uh, so we find the, the guys that lay eggs, we find the ones that have a kind of in-between uh, form of um, reproducing. And then we have the ones that uh, give birth to completely to life young with placenta and all. Uh, then we also have the guys that have parthenogenesis. We have the ones that can ex only reproduce uh, without having sex, so asexually. And the ones that do it once in a while, which is, to me, it's really insane. So um, these guys, can you tell me a little bit about um, how that happened? How was the, you know, the birthing process? And yeah, very exciting, of course. Uh, my male was very active in breeding. It was going at it right away when he uh, met the female. So, oh, hello. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've seen the first few attempts, he didn't succeed that much. But uh, yeah, when it started to heat up, like springtime, um, yeah, he really uh, worked uh, his way uh, into the female, <laughs> literally. literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was just every time I walked into my snake room, they were wow. at, going at it. So um, that was very exciting. And then, um, of course, the ovulation. Uh, boas normally swell immensely during their ovulation. It's like they are swallowed a rugby ball. ball, ball. And um, I didn't see it that obvious, but she had some swelling at some point, so I wrote it down and um, after uh, the that ovulation they are supposed to shed uh, 16 to 20 days later and she did that so that's when I started to count down and uh, with boa constrictors mostly after uh, the post ovulation sheds it's uh, 105 days uh, she did took a little bit longer uh, so she gave birth 119 days uh, after her post ovulation shed the weight was excruciating and it got me, <laughs> got me so stressed out but uh, yeah, the moment when I walked in here and the babies were there, it was just... Uh, 
one of the happiest moments of my life. I started crying like a little baby and I had a friend with me and uh, she hugged me and she was like, there are babies and I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> because yeah, it's something since 2011 where I've been working towards, you know, mm. like it's was such a dream of mine to breed these species because they're also known for not that easy to breed. So that's pretty cool, guys. I mean, we have a girl here that bred a species quite hard to breed to begin with. And one of the things I really, uh, we talked a lot, of course, about these babies. One of the things you told me was that um, the mother really showed interest in the in the animal. So they yeah. don't lay eggs. They are born in, um, what do we call it, like a sack, right? Yeah, egg sack. Yeah, yeah. egg sack. And of course, there's a lot of mucus and a lot of slime everywhere. And then what, what did the mother do? Yeah, at first, right after birth, she was still sweeping with her tail over the babies. Like, yeah, it's... I think it's uh, also during birth they do it as well, but I think that's uh, with the contractions and everything, but also uh, to get the young to move, like, you know, start crawling around, because yeah. in nature uh, they are very independent right from mm -hmm. the start and they have to go their own way. They're stimulating, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then after a while, when she crawled a little bit about uh, around the terrarium, she um, crawled with her head towards the young and she was... Yeah, it looked almost like what cats do, like, how do you say it? Um, purring. Yeah, no, like copious. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like pushing giving head bumps. Yeah, yeah, head bumps, yeah. Like, really pushing into the babies, like, you guys need to move. And it was such a beautiful sight, like, really... I think snakes are very primitive animals, but you can see they, they do have... Yeah, it's in instinct as well, like, she wants her young to move, but it's still very, very beautiful mm -hmm. to see. Of course, she invests a lot of energy into these young, so obviously she wants them to do fine. And like uh, like she said, it's really a thing with snakes. They have to be completely functional from day one. Yes. Uh, yes. Snakes don't really know parental care, so from day one they need to be able to hunt for themselves. So um, I think it's pretty cool to hear the story that a mother is really stimulating them to yes. you know, go on yeah. and start their lives. So that's so cool, you guys. Um, oh, I'm in love with these creatures. Actually, do you know my first snake was a was a boa constrictor? Yeah, they were just oh, they were just so amazing. up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next one. Bye! Bye.